minutes in. Let me check and see if we are all set. Um, okay, looking good. If you are watching and you can hear me or see me, then please write a comment in the chat box or in the comments. Let's see, make sure everything is okay. All right. Oh, I forgot to turn the chat on. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the chat on so you should be able to um, use the chat to comment on this video. So in the month of November, I'm going to be on YouTube Live doing November news lessons. So I have here a newspaper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, an article or some current event from the newspaper and I'm going to pull out eight or ten different uh, phrases, expressions, vocabulary words, and then I'm going to teach them to you. So even though these lessons are all about current events, the vocabulary is going to be something you can use any time, even if you're not watching the lesson right away. All right, does that sound good to, to you guys? Let me get back on the chat here. Wow, 63 people watching now. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so let's jump in. So the article I picked for today is about immigration and diversity in the United States. So the article basically says that the United States is getting more diverse, but that this diversity is a divisive issue in the election. A divisive issue means it's something that divides people. It causes conflict because some people like it, the fact that the U.S. is getting more diverse, and some people hate it. So a divisive issue is one that divides people's opinions in a very uh, clear way that sometimes causes conflict. Another divisive issue in the United States is abortion. Some people very strongly support it, other people very strongly oppose it. So this, uh, well, recently immigration is a divisive issue here. And the article says that in some communities there has been a burst, a surge, or an influx of immigrants. All three of these words, a burst, a surge, and an influx mean a big increase okay and influx more specifically means a lot of people or things coming into an area so if you say there's been a surge in immigration it means immigration has gone up or um, the economy has surged you can use surge as a verb that means the economy has gone up and the article also uses the word influx to talk about lots of people coming into an area and this issue is important because this year's presidential election is a tight presidential race. Let me explain this expression. So we have the word election, right, which we use for choosing who is going to be the president and who are going to be the leaders and the government. Um, yeah, the leaders of towns and cities and states. But it's also very common to use the word race. You might already be familiar with the word race when talking about cars racing or horses or people racing, literally trying to go fast and see who wins. But we can also use the word race when talking about elections. We call it the race to the White House or um, the race for governor or mayor. Those are different uh, leadership positions in the government at a local and state level. So. We have the presidential race, that means the competition for who is going to win the election, who is going to be president, and the article says that the race is tight. That means that it's very close. Um, the two candidates are both almost equal in terms of how many people are supporting them. So when the, ra when the race is tight, it's very difficult to predict who is going to win. So this year in 2016, we have a tight presidential race. So in this tight presidential race, 
uh, one candidate, Donald Trump, has been talking about building a wall and stopping the flow of illegal immigrants, mainly through Mexico. And this message has struck a chord with some voters. Well, voters are people who vote. So in the U.S., uh, American citizens can vote. We can uh, choose who is going to be president. And this expression, struck a chord with, if something strikes a chord with you, it means that um, it resonates with you. It makes you feel like someone understands you or it makes you... Uh, it, creates a connection between you and the person giving that message. So the article says that Trump's uh, stance on immigration, his position on immigration, has struck a chord with some voters, meaning that his message is uh, being liked and understood and supported by some people, mainly people who are uneasy about the changes in the country. So this word uneasy, what does that mean? It looks like it's the opposite of easy, but it's not. If you are uneasy, it means you feel just a little bit uncomfortable and just not too happy. Um, it's not a strong emotion. You know, it's not like uh, feeling hate or anger or anything like that. If you're uneasy, it just means you're a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit worried, okay? So that's what uneasy means. It's similar to uncomfortable. The article talks about some sizable counties where there have been a lot of immigrants uh, entering the community. So let's look at this expression. Counties, this refers to an area. So in the United States, we have the whole country, and then we have states, we have 50 states, and those states are divided into counties, which are like regions, and one county can usually have um, a few cities or one city and a few different areas around the city. So a county is like uh, a, an area within a state. And if something is sizable, what does that mean? Sizable means it's fairly big. It's of significant size. Okay, so if you're reading or watching the news and you hear or see the word sizable, it means that something is uh, fairly big, fairly large. Um, it's not huge, but it's um, bigger maybe than average. Okay, so some areas, large areas in the United States have been receiving a lot of immigrants. And one of the problems is that, uh, among other things, sometimes the children of the immigrants are struggling in school. So what does this word mean, struggling? That means uh, they are finding it difficult. They are having difficulty. They are um, having a hard time. Uh, so struggling means to uh, experience difficulty and maybe fight to try to do something, but you're just really having a lot of trouble, a lot of difficulty. So uh, some of the children are struggling in school uh, because of uh, English and they need to learn English and so it's difficult for them to accompany the class. And the problem with this, according to some people, is that it uses or it needs a lot of resources. You need extra teachers and extra textbooks and so that's why some people are uneasy about this whole situation because um, then the quality of the education goes down for everybody. But some people in some of these sizable counties have actually embraced the newcomers. Um, so newcomers are obviously people who are new to an area. They are just coming in recently. And this word embraced, and embrace, to embrace someone literally means to hug them with your arms. So you put your arms around the person and uh, express love or affection. But in this article, it's using the word embraced, uh, not literally to talk about people hugging uh, other people, but to talk about people welcoming, uh, accepting, and yeah, just fully welcoming. Uh, the newcomers. So if you embrace something, uh, it means that you fully accept it. You are excited about it, you have no problems with it, and you can embrace uh, a person, 
and welcome them or you can also embrace for example a new law if there's a new law that a lot of in the country that a lot of people like and support and welcome they're happy about it then you would say that the citizens have embraced the new law okay so there's a literal meaning for embrace to hug to put your arms around a person and then there is a more uh, metaphorical meaning for embrace meaning to welcome accept and support um, so one person who is quoted in the article says that I'm gonna skip ahead to number 10 and then I'm gonna go back to number 9 okay so one person from one of these areas that's receiving a lot of immigrants uh, said that initially he was a little bit worried but as he got to know the new people uh, he started talking with them and his kids were making friends with their kids then some of his prejudices uh, tend to they go by the wayside now this expression go by the wayside means that it disappears or it is left behind so it would mean that he stopped having uh, the prejudice or the racism against um, the immigrants However, the article points out that there are some real problems uh, with the cities and the schools when there is a large influx of immigrants, especially illegal immigrants. And so the concerns of the people shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. So to, be, to dismiss something out of hand means to kind of say, forget about it without even thinking about it or considering about it. So if you dismiss something out of hand, it means you don't take the time to listen. All right, so the article concluded by saying that uh, basically some of the residents of these communities are uh, have embraced the newcomers. They're happy about all the new uh, immigrants, but they still have concerns, um, worries, uh, or objections, and those concerns shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. So that means we need to listen. We need to take the time to understand their point of view before completely rejecting it. All right, so that's it for today's English in the News or November News lesson. Uh, I will be coming on Facebook Live again several times a week in the month of November. And if you'd like to watch this video again to review some of the expressions, then it will be available on my YouTube channel. All right, let's see how many people are watching right now. We have... 68 people online. Well, this is fantastic. I can give a class to 68 people all at once. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, then please like it and share it with your friends. All right, that is all for today and I will see you next time.